The Fibber McGee and Molly Show. NBC and Tums present Fibber McGee and Molly Transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Bill Dench and directed by Max Hutton. Fibber and Molly will be with you in a minute. Don Wilson speaking, and mighty glad to tell you about Tom's Don't Wait Relief from Acid Indigestion. Don't Wait Relief. That's right, because Tom's don't make you wait on glasses, spoons, water, and mixing. Instead, you eat Tom's like candy, anytime, anywhere, and instantly, Tom's start neutralizing the excess acid, which might be caused by too much or too rich food, heavy smoking, or overindulgence. Right away, you start feeling Tom's gentle neutralizing action. So fast and effective, yet free of acid rebound. No wonder Tums are America's number one choice for don't wait relief from heartburn and other acid stomach discomfort. Try Tums yourself, and always keep them handy in pocket or purse. Economical, too, only 10 cents a roll. After eating, before bed, you'll be thankful for a roll full of T-U-M-S, Tums for the tummy. <laughs> The Wistful Vista Women's Club has long maintained a club room where visiting servicemen may come on weekends for coffee and donuts and conversation. A problem confronts the club now, however, and Mrs. McGee is discussing it on the phone right now. So I suggested that the room should be painted and dressed up a little, Mabel. Make it a little more homey looking for the boys. Yes, it really needs it. So who do you think they elected chairman of the Fixing Up Committee? <laughs> Sure, me and my big mouth. Well, I'll think of something. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Who's that on the phone, Molly? Me. I mean, besides. Just Mabel Toops. Why? Seems like you've been on that phone all day with one gal or another. I'm just wondering. As the guy said when he walked into the kitchen and took a big spoonful of boiling laundry, what's cooking, kiddo? <laughs> oh, it's nothing for you to worry about, dearie. I don't want to bother you with our lady type troubles. Oh, no. That's not the right attitude, my dear. After all, it's a husband's job to lighten at all times his wife's worries. Oh, my. And if she hasn't got any, he ought to provide some. Loosen up, Tootsie. What's the bind? <laughs> well, you know our women's club runs a sort of a little servicemen's center on weekends where the boys can come for coffee and donuts and make their phone calls. Oh, yeah, sure. You've been doing that a long time. What's the matter? High price of coffee going to force you to serve it in thimbles or something? I know a guy in the thimble business if you no, want No, no. The coffee and the donuts are donated. Good. For that matter, the club room was rent-free, too, but the place is sort of run down looking, and we're trying to figure out how to fix it up a little. You know, brighten it up. Oh, that. It costs so darn much money to do anything these days, and the club has exactly a dollar eighty-nine in the treasury. Mm, just about enough to have a good sign painted that says off-limits, ain't it? Huh? We'll figure out some way to raise money. Will you get the door? I've got some things on the stove, and i better take a look. Okay, at Tootsie. Now, ah, there goes a good kid. I wish there was some way I could help her with her product. Come in. Good morning, group, Snoot. Where's your patient wife this morning? She is in the kitchen, Frizzleface. Oh? And she's not a patient. She feels fine. So get that fee-hungry look off your mud-colored map. Oh? I heard she had a troublesome little wart on her hands, and I thought she might want me to remove him by the scruff of the neck. <laughs> That's very amusing, George. Well, don't stand there. Toss your big fat satchel in the chair and set a spell. Thank you. You know the club room that Molly's Women's Club runs for the servicemen on weekends, Doc? Oh, sure. Down a third and oak. That's right. Had a call there a couple of weeks ago. Visiting Marine stuck a coffee spoon in his eye. What about it? Well, Molly's upset about the looks of the place. Says it's kind of run down and dingy looking, and the gals put her in charge of getting it redecorated. So? So, as usual, the club's got no dough. Molly's trying to figure out some... Well, I'll toss a few bucks on the drum for the visiting warrior's son. I'm glad to. Thought you would. Those service centers mean a great deal to the boys, and the best is none too good for those Keep kids. Keep your voice down, Fatso. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want Molly to hear this, because I just got a great idea. You got an idea? Yeah. I'm against it. You haven't even heard it. I've heard other ideas of yours. Pipe down, will you? Now listen. Okay. I'm going to paint that joint and clean it up and redecorate it myself. I'll get a few guys to help me, and we'll really do the place over. We won't need money. Well, hey, now. Maybe you have come up with a good idea for a change. Betcha. 
Gee, if I can just get away from the office. I love to swing a paintbrush. Count me in. Huh? Not so loud, Loud Bucket. Uh, not so loud, Loud Bucket. Uh, but Tracy at the hardware store will donate some paint and brushes. Oh, sure. Old Tracy will do it. We'll round up some new secondhand furniture and stuff, and I can get that old pool table out of the Elks Club basement, and shh, Molly's coming. Okay, act innocent. And I thought maybe you'd like to ride downtown with me, my boy, and talk over our strategy for the bowling match tonight. I... Oh, hello, Molly. Hello, Dr. Gamble. Who are you shouting at? Well, I, uh, I didn't mean to. That is... Uh... Me, Molly. Yeah, he, he was shouting at me. <laughs> he has to shout. <laughs> I, I got something in my ear. What? My fingers. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to ride downtown with Doc. Come on, Doc. We better get going. You got to get back to the office on a big time. Wait, the phone. 79 Westville Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Oh, yes, just a minute. Your office, Doctor. Oh, thanks. Hello? Yes, Miss Ogilvy. Mrs. Clatterhatch? Oh, her. Do you think it's really broken, or is she just... Uh-huh. Well, you better use the new machine for her. Yeah, set the pointer for 90 and turn the power on halfway. What's she doing, that old dame? Yeah, you better leave her in front of it for about 20 minutes to relieve her misery. Okay. What's the matter with Mrs. Clatterhatch, Doctor? What's broken? A radio. If she misses one man's family, she's in misery. <laughs> Come on, McGee, let's go. There's more fun with the McGee's shortly. Our religious institutions are strongholds of the American way of life. Our country was founded by men who had faith in God and who were willing to endure hardship and sacrifice for the sake of that faith. In these troubled times, we need the comfort and inspiration of religious faith more than ever. Faith helps hold our families together. It builds moral and spiritual character, and it creates the spirit of brotherhood on which democracy depends. There is need in these times to support a way of life based on the enduring principles of religion which knit the family together, make for good citizenship, and build the character of the children. The religious institutions in your community need your interest and support. So take an active part in religious affairs. Your pastor, rabbi, or priest will give you invaluable family counsel and aid if you're a newcomer to the community. To face the problems of the future, America must be morally strong, and that moral strength comes through worship and faith. Go to church this week and take someone with you. I'd like to drop you off at Tracy's Hardware Store, McGee, and get back to the office. Ah, it's okay, Doc. Hey, you said you were going to talk to Wally Wimple this afternoon, huh? Yeah, he's coming in for some x-rays. Oh, his wife's back, is she? Yeah. I'll see if he's got any furniture, chairs and stuff, anything the club can use. Yeah, if he's got anything that hasn't been broke over his head. <laughs> I'll put the bite on Tracy here for whatever I can con out of him, too, Doc. Uh, use my name if you want to. Good. No, no, on second thought, maybe you better not. Huh? His youngster's tonsils grew back 12 years later. That's my fault. Sure. Who else is? <laughs> ah, boy, I got some wonderful ideas for redecorating that place. I got a swell color scheme all worked out. If Tracy will give me it. I'll call you, Fatso. Okay. This is one of the best ideas I ever had. Not only be a big surprise for Molly, but I'll turn out a club room for them servicemen that'll seem just like home. Them guys is there. Oh, hi, Tracy. I'd like to see about getting... Just a second there, McGee. Have to wait your turn. Huh? My turn? Yep, got a new system, McGee. New way of waiting on customers. Here. Take a number out of the box here, and I'll call you when it's your turn. Just like the big stores do it. Yeah, but Tracy, I just... Got no time to argue, McGee. Rules are rules. Oh. Okay. I picked a number. Now what? Now, sit down. Right over there. Oh. Uh... I don't like to keep my customers standing around. Too many things in the hardware store they can slip in their pocket. Okay. Now then, what's your number? Sixteen. <clears throat> number sixteen? Well, at last. What can I do for you, McGee? Tracy, I want a couple of gallons of good oil paint and about three good brushes. Free. What was that last word? I says I want you to give them to me, Tracy. Now, don't get panicky, and I'll tell you all about it. McGee, I found out long ago that giving away stuff is the quickest way to lose a friend. Just slip me the paint and the brushes, Tracy, and I'll try to get along without you. Now, you see... I had what... a friend once. Good friend. We were closer than two coats of shellac. Told him anything I had he wanted, just take it. So he did. Yeah, what did he take? My wife. Took her and went off to California. Hated me ever since. 
Lost a mighty good friend that way, McGee. Well, this is different, Tracy. This is for a good cause. My wife's club wants to redecorate their servicemen's center. You know, paint it up and fix it up. Servicemen, eh? Yeah. Me and some of the fellows are going to do the work, and I thought it would look kind of nice to have a little sign up there that says, Materials Donated by Tracy's Hardware. Well, now, that's entirely different. <laughs> Glad to help out in a cause like that, McGee. Former serviceman myself, you know. World War I, of course. Oh, the big war. I never knew that. Yep. Navy. Listed in the Navy without ever knowing it. How'd that happen? Saw a sign. Said, uh, come in and see the world. I thought it was a newsreel. Ah. Well, let's get down to business here. What kind of paint you want? Tracy, I figure for our men in the service, nothing but the best. I want them guys to walk into that club room and feel like they belong. To feel at home. Noble sentiment. I got the color scheme all worked out in my head. Give me a gallon of good, solid olive drab first. Olive drab? Yep. Then you better give me some fire engine red for contrast. If you got any five-gallon cans that I can fill with sand and paint them red, that'll be a nice G.I. touch. Well, don't forget the navy. Yeah, and a half a gallon of navy blue ought to make a good combination with the olive drab. And if I can get hold of some camouflage cloth someplace, I'll cover the chairs with that, and it ought to tickle the Marines to death. I want to be sure all the branches of the service are took care of, and boy, when we start painting that place tomorrow, we'll do a job of knowledge from the company. <laughs> We'll say goodnight to Fibber and Molly in a moment. We know you enjoy the pleasure-filled comedy shows presented every week on the NBC radio network because of the many letters you send to us telling us so. And that's why we like to call your attention to the fact that these programs are on the air. Tomorrow night, we know you'll want to hear the amusing adventures of the great Gildersleeve, as portrayed by Willard Waterman. Gildersleeve always finds himself in trouble, and when you listen, you'll always find yourself in a happy mood. So make it a date to join the great Gildersleeve every Wednesday night. The same night, you can play You Bet Your Life on the NBC radio network. Groucho Marx is your quiz master on You Bet Your Life. And his ad-lib comments with his contestants make the program a must for millions of radio listeners. And remember, tomorrow night you'll also hear the big story with authentic dramatizations of newspaper reporters' news scoops. And walk a mile, the fun-packed, fast-paced quiz game with Bill Cullen as your master of ceremonies. Wednesday's wonderful when you listen to the top shows on the NBC radio network. <laughs> going to be busy tomorrow. Tomorrow? Why'd you ask? Well, I want to do some house cleaning, and you could help me move the furniture. Oh, not not tomorrow, Molly. I Well, I, I got things to do tomorrow. I, I'm going to be busy. busy I'm going to be busy all day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Doing what, for instance? Well, uh, you see, I promised Doc... Well, tomorrow I'm going to... Get out of the house to skip the house cleaning, huh? No, no, it's not that. I just... Be... All right. I'm used to it. Happy Groundhog Day, anyhow. Huh? Oh. Oh, thanks. Well, good night. Good night, all. <laughs> NBC and Come have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed with Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Campbell and Jeff Kirkpatrick as Tracy. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. Senator Ford, and can you top this tonight on the NBC radio network?